Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petit. Welcome back to Mac Fly Backpack video series. Make sure to watch the first two videos to find out what supplies are needed to complete this project and how to finish the lining portion of the pattern. In this tutorial, I will show you how to make the strap connectors and adjustable shoulder straps for the mini Mac Fly Backpack and also how to make and attach the backpack handle. The link to the pattern and all supplies I used in this tutorial can be found in the description box below this video. Now we're going to prepare the strap connectors for the mini McFly backpack. So to do that you can either draw a line in the center or you can just eyeball it because we're going to press the longer edges towards the, towards the middle. So I'm going to apply some double-sided tape again. And then I'm going to fold the longer edges towards the wrong side of the fabric. And then I'm going to press it with my fingers. And then I'm going to do that on the other side. When you have both of your strap connectors ready, we're going to take them to the machine and top stitch along both edges about 5 to 7 millimeters from the edge. You're going to take your D-rings and fit the connector through the D-ring. So you have to make sure the folded edges of your strap connectors are inside. So when you fold the connector in half, they are all hidden inside. So you're going to do that and then we can clip it on one side just for a second and then repeat on the other strap connector. Just like that. Okay, now you're going to have to use a protractor or any other ruler that has the angled markings. Usually on quilting rulers like this one you will find a 30, 45 or 60 degrees angle. So this is very useful here. We're going to take one of those strap connectors and we're going to use the 60 degrees line here. So I'm going to take my clip away so it's easier for me. So when you have the 60 degrees line, this is your 60 degrees angle here. And we have to copy that angle on the strap connectors. So we're going to make a line going this direction. So we have to, uh, so basically we have to create a 60 degrees angle here. To do this, what I like to do is just to use my 60 degrees line and I'll put this, I'll put that line parallel to my folded edges. I'll put my ruler, my at the edge of my ruler on this side. I line it up so I have the 60 degrees angle straight and it's parallel to the edge. And then I can just draw the line. Just like that. Now that I have that line drawn, I'm going to cut the fabric through through both layer through all layers at that line. There you go, just like that. Next you're going to repeat that on the second connector. In case if you have a fabric with directional print or if you prefer one one side or the other Make sure you you do it as a mirror image. If the first connector was was cut this direction, then you have to make sure the other connector, if this is your side that you want to see, for example, you want to make sure it goes this direction. Again, you can either use the ruler and that 60 degrees angle, or you can use the first connector and copy it. Whichever Whichever is easier and whichever you prefer it. If you don't have protractor or a ruler with those angled lines, you can just take the strap connector 
and from that raw short edge measure about 12 millimeters so that's half an inch and you would make a mark so you would measure half an inch 12 millimeters make a mark and then from that mark you would draw a line towards the corner then again we can just cut it along the line when you have your connectors ready you can either base them along that angled edges or if you feel comfortable take your external back piece and we're going to measure three centimeters from the bottom edge so you're going to take a ruler and mark three centimeters so you're going to mark three centimeters from the bottom edge along each side then make a little notch now you're going to take your strap connectors and you're going to place that angled edge along that straight edge of your back piece and we're going to place that corner at the marking so basically the connector is three centimeter above the bottom edge and then we can just clip that in place make, again make sure your connector is going upwards you don't want to position it downwards that would be wrong for this pattern and then you can clip it in place now we're going to base the connectors about five millimeters from the edge Now we're going to work on our adjustable shoulder straps for the mini backpack. So you're going to start with drawing a line in the center of your strap. Then if you cannot press your fabric, apply some double sided tape on each side. Then we're going to fold the long edges towards that line in the center. I've got one strap already prepared here. If you're working with full leather, cork, vinyl or some thick fabric, I would recommend leaving about 2mm space between the raw edges. So in the next step, when you're going to fold the strap in half, it is much easier and you don't have much bulk in here. So I already applied my double sided tape. Now I'm going to fold my edges towards the center. got both of the straps folded now so the next thing to do is to finish the raw short edge on one end of your strap so if you are using directional print you want to make sure this is done on the bottom edge of your strap so let's say I have a print that runs from the top to the bottom I want to make sure that the bottom edge is the one that I will finish to do this you're going to fold the strap in half with right sides together and then we need to make sure that we align those folded edges here. And you can just clip that in place. Next, we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew that short end using one centimeter seam allowance and do that on both straps. If you're using full leather, cork or vinyl, you might as well just skip this step and leave the raw edges so you could possibly use one inch strap end cap here to finish off the raw edge or maybe you use an edge coat or just leave the edges uh, raw like this um, if you prefer that look as well. Now you can trim the seam allowance after you've trimmed the seam allowance, you're going to turn the strap right side out. You can use your corner shaper for that. Make nice neat corners. Now we're going to fold both straps in half and closing all the seam allowance inside. So you're going to fold the strap like this, line up those folded edges and clip everything around.
here we go i've got one strap completed now i'm going to do that on the other strap we're going to take this to the machine now and we're going to top stitch the straps around all sides about two millimeters from the edge Once you've got your strap top stitched, you're going to take your strap adjuster and feed the finished edge through the strap adjuster. And you're going to wrap it around the middle bridge, just like that. You can measure about five centimeter fold. Okay, clip that in place. Then you can take this to the machine and if your machine can handle all the bulk, stitch a box uh, at the short end, then you can stitch a crossing lines in the center of the box. Otherwise you can install a couple of rivets like I have done on the first strap here. I'm going to mark my rivet placements, then I can punch the holes. Now I'm going to take that to my hand press to set those rivets in. Take your external back piece and your straps and we're going to fit the straps through the D-rings. So you're going to insert the strap in a way that the folded finished edge with your strap adjuster is facing upwards and you're going to fit the other raw edge underneath the D-ring. So when it all lay flat it looks like this then making sure that your strap is not twisted you're going to take that raw edge and wrap around the strap adjuster in the opposite way you've done it previously so i'll show you from the side what i'm doing so this is our finished edge you can see we've wrapped it this this direction and now this is our raw end and I fit it through the adjuster around that middle bridge in the opposite direction. So when you tighten it up, it should look something like that. You have your adjustable strap now attached to the back panel. And then you can repeat that on the other side. Okay, so take your handle and again draw a line in the center and you're going to fold those edges towards the line. Okay, once you've got those two edges folded, you're going to fold the entire handle in half and closing the seam allowance. So this is the folded edges with the seam allowance. You're going to fold it in half, just like that. Line up those folded edges together and clip them in place. Now we're going to take this to the machine and stitch along both edges of the handle. Now we're going to attach the handle and the strap along that top edge of your back piece. So grab your ruler and on the mini McFly version, you will need to measure six centimeter down from the top edge. You can just draw a line. Make sure you, you can mark your center so you know where is the center as well. Then from that center, measure two centimeters in each direction. 
I hope you can see it better now. So I've drawn my line, which is six centimeter below the top edge. This is my center. And then from that center, I measure two centimeters in each direction. Now you're going to take your handle and with right side facing up, we're going to place the handle on top of the back and we're going to line up those two shorter edges along that line that we've drawn. And we're going to place the handle four centimeter apart. That's why we drew those two notches here. So basically your handle will look something like this. Place the handle in two lines, one close to the edge and then another one about a centimeter apart, just to hold that in place. If you want, you can use double sided tape to hold that handle in place at the moment. However, I feel like it's not necessary for me. I can just take this to the machine put my handle straight, base that one end, and then I can bring the other one, line it up at the markings, and then base the other end. Do, do however it is easier for you. As you see, I've basted my handle. Now I'm going to base the straps. So when your strap lays flat with right side facing up, you're going to bring that short end, flip it so the right side of the strap faces the back panel. Place it against that line next to the handle. Then you can pin it in place or use double sided tape. And then we're going to baste it exactly the same way we've done for the handle. Once you've done the first strap, you can repeat the process and do the second strap on the other side of the handle, just like that. That is all for this part of the Mac Fly Backpack tutorial. In the next video, we will make the back trim and I will show you how to make the strap connectors and padded shoulder straps for the regular Mac Fly Backpack. Like this video if you found this tutorial helpful and let me know in the comments if you are making or planning to make the Mac Fly Backpack. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Stay crafty, friends.